What's up, buddy? What's up? I like this. Yeah? How is it? It's good. It's a Bus little... Busy today. You got steps over there. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured that. It's a little busy today. It's a little bit. I've watched like three helicopters just depart west. This oh. thing's sick. Right? I could see you from a, lot, a ways away, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Do your thing. Right. What year is this thing? 77. 1977? Yeah. Is it ever weird to you that you're just out flying a plane by yourself? Totally hit me on the way in today. It, like, mm. It's a this crazy concept, is isn't it? I still get that feeling some days. You're like, I'm in a freaking airplane by myself. That's it. Just by, <laughs> just by myself. Somebody trusted Good me. Good to like, see you. See you too. <laughs> like the FAA, the government was like, you can never fly Yeah, yeah, I know. Still sketches me out. That's pretty good up here. Yeah, yeah, full tanks too. I mean, the climb rate is like on today, maybe like I did like two, three hundred feet a minute. Yeah, it's not much crazy. No, but well, you're, what's your burn rate? Max you... 10 gallons. That's not bad. I'm usually at like 8.7. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's only cruising at, I mean, most of the time you're cruising within the flaps range. Hundred knots. So you're only doing maybe ninety. But with a good tailwind, like if we're going out to Lyman, then you're covering. You're looking at like 134 knots over the ground. So like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets up and goes. That's sweet. How many uh, gallons of fuel? Uh, 19 aside. This thing will hold almost 40 gallons. And the other one, the blue one, creates that are Papa, has extended tanks, uh, 23 gallons each side. What? Yeah. And granted, you're not getting like any performance out of that. But like, where would your range be theoretically? Right? Uh, you'd probably be at, I don't know, quite close to on the upper end of 400. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, when I was doing the uh, flight plan of Bozeman, it was like 433 knots, or 433 miles. Yeah. And suggested one stop. Probably just halfway through at like Gillette and then just fill up and be good to go. What? Yeah. Now, granted, it's going to take you like four and a half, five hours. The range is still pretty good. The range is still pretty good, yeah. Well, you want to go fly? I want to go fly. All yeah. right, let's do it. Love the sliding canopy. Well, this You got space behind you too for stuff. Sweet. What a sweet little plane. I see why your appeal is with these now. Yeah. What? And you can taxi around like this too. Look at the view. <laughs> I know. What? Holy the, crap, uh, dude, it's like a convertible. The VA speed for the canopy is 112 knots. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Wow. This uh, is great. Mixture here, full rich. Off. Fuel selector tank with the most fuel. Prime. Shouldn't need much. But we'll go with one. Flaps are up and checked. These electric flaps? Yeah. Whoa. Oh yeah. Which is weird because I fly the 2021 um, 
Piper. It has still manual. Gotta man <laughs> still gotta manually pull it up. <laughs> Magneto's on left, throttle open a quarter inch. Clear! Clear! So it's pretty easy. Yeah, well, I mean, I was just running it. But yes, normally. I mean, on, still, on, for 19 start, yeah. usually they should have a hiccup of some sort, so it's pretty. Well, that's why you fly at Aspen Flying Club. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So today's adventure was with my good friend Craig. He actually just recently got his private pilot's license in this particular aircraft. And I, in fact, was his very first passenger on this adventure. The plan was to leave KBJC, which is Broomfield, Colorado, known as Rocky Mountain Airport. It's located in western Colorado and truly yields one of the best views around. Our intended adventure route was to a small little airport northeast of this location known as Platte Valley. Now the particular aircraft we were flying was a 1978 Grumman Cheetah. This variant was 150 horsepower and two seats, had a range of about 450 miles, and cruised at about 100 knots. I really wanted to showcase this particular aircraft because for me it was very unique. And what I mean by unique is that it's very pilot oriented. About the closest that this aircraft represented to a newer aircraft was a Diamond DA-20. And I really like this plane because A, it had a sliding canopy, which was really cool. But the overall visibility of the aircraft was very refreshing to see. A typical 172 has a good overall visibility for the pilot, but this was next level. It truly was feeling like it was in a sports car with a convertible top. I really liked the gauge layouts and I really liked the uh, feel of the aircraft and its visibility around me. After doing a quick run up, we were ready to depart KBJC. Now you get a rough idea of how wide this runway is in comparative to other runways. This is a major airport hub for a lot of corporate jets. And <laughs> for us, this little plane uh, really gives you a perspective of how big this runway truly is. Now I was really curious how this aircraft would perform today because it was quite a hot day and we're at altitude. And the density altitude of this particular day was nearly 8,500 feet. So I'm curious what essentially 320 pounds of payload at 150 horse would yield for a takeoff roll. And to my surprise, the aircraft actually performed quite impressively for how hot it was that day. You can kind of get a great perspective of how beautiful this particular location at the airport is with the Rocky Mountains in the distance right there. It's, it doesn't get really get much better than that. Now one neat feature about this plane was you can essentially open the canopy while in flight. And you'll see coming up here there's actually a max speed rating for the canopy to be open. And on a hot day, when there's not much airflow through the aircraft, opening this canopy and getting an even better view around you and getting all that fresh air was, I don't know, something that's really neat from an aircraft from this era. I was really impressed by this particular plane with the control services. And what I mean by control services is that the response in the controls almost felt like a sports car. The aileron roll was phenomenal. It was very responsive. The elevator, you could trim the aircraft out, go hands-free, and it flew straight as an arrow. What I, points that I appreciate about this aircraft is it's really a good cross-country aircraft. Now keep in mind, it's only doing about 100 knots. It's, it's happy cruise speed is about 100 knots. But for the performance that we were getting at a burn rate of about 8.2 gallons per hour, it was wonderful. Now, we are arriving to Platte Valley here, and I didn't tell Craig that it's one of the most narrow runways around. And uh, <laughs> you could tell by his reaction that he was in for a treat trying to put this plane down on this narrow runway. But I like practicing at this particular airport because A, it's got very low traffic. So you, a pilot can really focus in on the aircraft and hone his or her skills on doing touch and goes and landings and takeoff performance. And, you know, without their distractions of everything else around you. As you're coming in here, you can get a great perspective of how truly narrow this runway is. 
I would practice over here with my tailwheel airplane and you know the, probably the first 10 landings here I was like wow this is this is gonna be tight but I always say if you can get good at practicing on a narrow runway like this you fly back to KBJC or Centennial KAPA you'll be uh, it'll be absolute cake putting the plane down on that big of a runway landing speed of the Grumman here is about 70 and uh, he rotates about 60 65 for uh, touchdown and there's a uh, funny fact is these are electric flaps on this particular plane and of course the canopy comes wa open all the way and we're back in convertible mode which to me is can't get much cooler than that if you're interested in this particular aircraft I, I would highly recommend it if you're learning to fly on one or you see people teaching in one of these I think it's a great airplane to learn how to fly in but if you're also interested in buying one I absolutely recommend it the price range of these is about the same as a Cessna 150 or 172 in my opinion is way cooler and still performs the same if not better and it's just a very unique aircraft price range of these I've seen them range from 20k to 50,000 for a really really nice one and like I said there's multiple variants there's some with 180 horsepower four seats and uh, better range this one like I said was 150 horsepower 40 gallons 450 mile range as we were taxiing back here this Piper one for a Cessna 140 and this Pitts biplane had to move to the side of us so we could taxi and I had to laugh because this aircraft this airport is so small that there are no areas to move over you just have to pull over in the grass to let aircraft by and I kind of like that hopefully you enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight what the Grumman Cheetah is all about and I really approve this aircraft overall for learning owning and just general it's a really neat pilot friendly aircraft thanks for watching